Hi, in this video I wanted to talk to you about fitness tracking apps. Now there are a huge array of different fitness tracking apps. Um, for example, you might want to track your nutrition with something like MyFitnessPal. You might want to plan your routes with something like plotterroute.com. Um, you might want one that's uh, particular to a brand such as Nike's Run Club. Um, but most people, when we talk about fitness tracking apps, are thinking about things like Strava. So that's that's the the leading one in terms of logging your training and and uh, tracking your your progress in your fitness. And so that's the kind of app that I'm going to be talking about mostly in this video, right? And which it, it's the platform that I have most experience of using personally. But I will talk about some of the other ones as well. <clears throat> now, the success of all of these apps. Um, really relies on the people who use them in that if if you're new to running you're more likely to use one that one of your friends has already downloaded or is already using because they'll be using them because they really like them so therefore they're going to be an advocate for that particular app just like I am I suppose for Strava <clears throat> but also because it's a platform where you can you know it's a social platform a little bit like Facebook where you can comment on other people's uh, runs, bike rides, etc. It lends itself to following what your friends are already doing, because then you've got a wider network of people to to be interested in what you're doing, and for you to be interested in what other people are doing. Um, so that's definitely something I'd recommend you doing. I, I wouldn't encourage you to use one over any other. That's entirely up to you and where you are. Um, in terms of your circumstances, what what your friends and family perhaps are using already. Um, but a lot of them do have all the same features. So they'll they'll give you a GPS map of the route that you ran. They'll tell you how many calories you might have burnt roughly. Um, they'll be able to log um, how many miles you've done in different running shoes, for example. You'll be able to look at the stats about how quick you ran, your average pace and things like that elevation you gained during a, a run etc etc um but in terms of the app you choose i just wanted to talk about some of the main ones now so the the, the world leader really is strava and that's generally the reason that i recommend people use that one because it's the one that i use it's also the one that most people in the world rely on and use um and you, you're really quite likely to know people who already use it as well. Um, even if you didn't know that they used it, they might not necessarily have told you that they use it, but that's probably, what, well, it is the most popular one. So it's the one most likely that you'll, you'll know people on there. But other ones include things like Runtastic or Endomondo. There's the Nike Run Club. There's, um, for those of you who are really into your stats, the really geeky side of, of things to do with, um, sport. Then there's a website called Fetch Everyone. Um, if you just search for Fetch Everyone on Google, you'll find it. Um, and there's Garmin Connect. So if you have a Garmin device, then you can use Garmin Connect. So um, that's that's some of the the most uh, most well used apps, the ones that you you're most likely going to be using. Um, I'll just go through what I use and I'll explain why I use the things that I use because that might be something that will help you make a decision. So when I first started out running, I used something called Endomondo, which I've met, just mentioned. And that was because my friend just down the road was using that. And this was back in the infancy of smartphones when you know actually using your phone to track your run was something quite novel. Um, and then... After a while, uh, a friend, another friend of mine, um, was waxing lyrical about how great Strava was, and I'd heard a little bit about it, but then decided I'd I'd go and have a look at it. And one of the features of Strava that none of the other apps have is something called segments. So what happens whenever you run a particular route? What you can do on the computer is create a segment, a part of your run that you've done. Um, and give it a title and a name. So say if I, for example, I ran from my home to the local park, I could then, uh, and then as part of my run, and I carried on running for a few miles and then got came back home, I could just get that small part of my run 
on Strava, make it a segment, give it a name, and then anyone who's ever run from my house to the park the same way will automatically be uh, populated into a leaderboard. So you then know who is the fastest person to have ever done that segment before. And you can find out where you are on, on that leaderboard too. Now with Strava, that, that um, provides lots of different competitions. So it's not just about how fast you can run a 10K, but it means that there's lots of local people that you can compete against, but also you can compete against yourself. So as your training continues, you might find that, you know, you, you're getting faster, hopefully. And, you know, you might want to test yourself on a particular segment and get a better time. And if you become the leader of that segment, you get a trophy, an online trophy. You get medals whenever you do a segment the fastest you've ever done it before. And so it's another great way to motivate yourself to get out and, and also track your progress, see how you're getting on. Or there might be a particular route that you do quite often. You could you could do the whole route as a segment. And then not only will you be timing your run, but you'll also have uh, Strava doing that for you so that you can then compare your your time as you go through, as you do that. And that, that can be really, it's fun. It's really useful as long as, again, you're using it in the, in the right way. It is it's quite lighthearted. I know some people who take it to the extreme and get quite offended if someone goes faster than them on a segment. I wouldn't be too precious about it. But generally, it's just another way of giving you something else to help motivate you to want to get out the door and get running. Um, I also really like Strava because some professional athletes and elite athletes post some of their things on Strava. So uh, Tour de France cyclists or people like Killian Jornet, who is well, famous in the running world anyway, for uh, running record times up and down mountains and things like that. So looking at the kind of times and paces that they do is really quite interesting. And again, it can be quite motivational and inspiring as well. So that's another reason why I like to use Strava. Um, I also use Garmin Connect because I have a Garmin watch. So it makes sense for me to, to utilise that. But it also provides a bit more detailed uh, analysis than Strava can because it's a Garmin device. It syncs up to Garmin Connect website. And so that, that would tell me more about um, things like my cadence, for example. So how many footsteps I take per minute across my, the whole of my run, things like that. So it's a bit more advanced, but if you like your stats, then that, that can be something to look into as well. That's really useful. Um, in terms of route planning, I really love just getting Google Maps out on my phone and searching for different places that I may not have been before because I do like to keep my running fresh by running in different places in the local area and finding twitchels and little jitties and different places that I didn't even know you could get down before. So Google Maps is a recommendation for me, but it doesn't necessarily help you very easily find how far a route might be. So something like plotterroute.com is a really useful website because then you can actually plot a specific route and it will uh, automatically calculate how long that route is just so you don't end up having to go a lot further than you want to or not quite going as far as you wanted to and then having to do laps up and down your road, which is not that much fun, is it really? Um, so that's another, another app or website that I use. Um, I also have... Uh, got for you a couple of links um, or documents to different things. So there's a training pace calculator, which can be useful for you to have a look at in terms of your training, which we'll come on to in the next module. And also some pace conversion charts. So where I like to work in kilometres, quite a lot of the people that I coach like to work in miles. So I'm forever having to convert miles into kilometres and back again. Um, but if that's if that's something that's useful to you, then you can look at that in terms of timings as well. And it, it will help you think about what kind of 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon kind of times you might uh, be possibly aiming for if you stick to certain paces. And it's always it's just really quite interesting to see that. OK, so um, hopefully that's really helped just to explain that there are a number of different um, fitness tracking apps available 
that generally do lots of different things. So whether it's for the social aspect of being around like-minded people, um, specific stats on all the different kinds of things you can get stats on, whether it's to do with nutrition or route planning or something entirely different. There's lots for you to choose. Um, I've explained the ones that I use and, and why. Um, so hopefully some of that will be really useful for you. Okay. And I'll see you on the next video.